In this example, we're going to look at a module 6 counter and we're going to see how the state assignment will affect the number of implicants when we realize the counter. So the module 6 counter is defined as follows. We have six different states, S0 to S5, each representing the equivalence classes for module 6. If we have a 0 as an input, we will add 3 modulo 6. And if we have a 1 as an input, we will subtract 2 modulo 6. And here we have also the graph for the modulo 6 counter. So for example, if we are in state S0 and we get a 0 as an input, we will add 3. So in this case, we go to S3 here. Similarly, if we are in S1 and we add 3, we go to the state S4. If we have a 1 as an input, then we reduce by 2, which is the same as adding 4 modulo 6. So if we are in S0 and we get a 1 as an input, we will go to the state S4, because 0 minus 2 is the same as 0 plus 4, which is 4 modulo 6. And we also summarize this state transition graph in our state transition table that we have here. Similarly, just saying, for example, that if we are in state 0 and we get a 0 as an input, we go to state S3. And we, if we have a 1 as an input, we go to state S4. And also note here that we do not have an explicit output function here. So using this state transition table, let's make our first attempt of a state assignment. And now we're going to use the NBCD method for state assignment. So S0, we're going to call 0, 0, 0, S1, 0, 0, 1, S2, 0, 1, 0, S3, 0, 1, 1, S4, 1, 0, 0, and S5, 1, 0, 1. And looking at the state transition table here, we can just fill out the table using our state assignment. So if we are in S0 and we get a 0 as an input, we go to the state 0, 1, 1. And if we get a 1 as an input, we go to the state 1, 0, 0. If we are in S1, we similarly go to state S1, 0, 0 and 1, 0, 1. From S2, we go to 1, 0, 1 and 0, 0, 0. And in S3, we go to 0, 0, 0 and 0, 0, 1. If we are in S4, we go to 0, 0, 1 and 0, 1, 0. And if we are in S5, we go to 0, 1, 0 and finally to the state represented as 0, 1, 1. And now we want to do our Carnot maps. And we can see that we have three state variables and one input variable. So it means that we have four variables in our Carnot maps and we write them as two by two tables. So again, we use the trick that we use Q1 and Q2 for the rows. And then we use also Q3 we have to use for one of the columns and then we use X for one of the columns. If we do it in this way, it is very easy to go from the state transition table to the Carnot maps. So for example, the first part here of our Carnot map will say that we are in state 0, 0, 0 and we get the input 0. So in this case, Q1+, plus, Q2+, plus, and Q3+, plus will be given as 0, 1, and 1. In the next column of our table we are in state 0 0 0 and we have the input 1 and in that case we go to the state that we call 1 0 0. If we now move to the last column here of our table this means that we are now in state 0 0 1 with input 0 so this will be 1 0 0 looking at our state transition table and here, with a 1 as an input, we go to the state 1, 0, 1. Then if we go to the next row, the first entry will be that we are in state 0, 1, 0, and we have the input 0. So this means that we go to 1, 0, 1. So we have 1, 0, 1 here. And then with a 1 as an input, we go to 0, 0, 0. 
and the last column of this row represents that we are in state 0, 1, 1 with the input 0. So now we go to the state 0, 0, 0 and with a 1 as an input we go to the state 0, 0, 1. And then the states S4 and S5 can be found in the bottommost row of the Carnot maps. So in the first column here we have the state 1, 0, 0, which is S4. If we have the input 0, we go to the state 0, 0, 1. And if we have a 1 as an input, we go to the state 0, 1, 0. And finally, for the last two columns, that represents that we are in the state 1, 0, 1. And with the input 0, we have 0, 1, 0. And with the input 1, we have 0, 1, and 1. And since we do not have any states that are called 1, 1, 0 or 1, 1, 1, it means that we can never end up in these states. So these will be filled by our don't care terms in the Cano maps because they can never happen in our Boolean functions. And now we want to find our prime implicants and what we want to do is to find as large boxes as possible. And we, can, we must include all the ones, but we can, if we want, also include our don't care terms. So in this case we have these three prime implicants. For the Q2 plus function, we have this prime implicant, which is very small, of course, but it's the way it has to be. And then to cover the rest of the ones, we have to use this prime implicant, and then we use also this prime implicant in order to cover the last one that we have. And for our function Q3 plus, we can cover this function using only two prime implicants. So we have this prime implicant here, and then we have this prime implicant here, where we take advantage of the fact that we can use two of our don't care terms, one in each of the prime implicants. And since all our prime implicants are essential, we can write our functions as first q1 plus equals the first prime implicant, which is q1 prime, q2 prime, and x, or q1 prime, q2 prime, and q3, or q2, q3 prime, x prime. And then we have q2 plus, which equals first the smallest prime implicant, which is represented as q1 prime, q2 prime, q3 prime, x prime. Or then we have the two larger prime implicants, which are represented as the first one is q1 x, and the second one is q1, q3. And q3 plus is given by the two larger prime implicants here, which are represented by q3 prime, x prime, or q3, x. So summarizing this, we have in total eight implicants in our minimized expressions for these Boolean functions. Now let us see the example where we use gray coding of the states instead. And note now that we are not looking for a gray coding of the different indices in our state. So this is not what we're looking for. Instead, we are looking for a gray coding that occurs between the state transitions. So every time we go from one state to the next, we want to change, in the best case, only one of the state variables. And sometimes we need to, say, to change more than that. There are typically several gray codings that we can use, and it is not always easy to find the optimal gray coding that we can, but we have to try our best. In this case, let us consider the following coding. So S0, we would denote as 0, 0, 0. S1, we're going to denote as 1, 0, 1. S2, as 
zero one one as three as one zero zero as four as zero zero one and as five we will call one 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 so let us first fill out the state transition table and then we will discuss this gray coding. So in this case we go to 1, 0, 0 and here we go to 0, 0, 1. If we are in S1 with a 0 we go to the one we call 0, 0, 1 and here we go to 1, 1, 1. For S2 we have here 1, 1, 1 and for a 1 input we have 0, 0, 0. For S3 we have 0, 0, 0 and with a 1 input we have 1, 0, 1. For S4 with a 0 input we have 1, 0, 1 and with a 1 input we have 0, 1, 1. And for S5 with a 0 input we have 0, 1, 1 and finally with a 1 input we have 1, 0, 0. Now let us analyze this coding a little bit. So if we are in state S0 then we can go to 1, 0, 0 and 0, 0, 1. So here we only change one variable in the first case and one variable in the second case. If we are in state S1, then we can go to 0, 0, 1 and 1, 1, 1. So also here we change only one variable if we have a 0 input and also one variable if we have a 1 input. For state S2, here we change only one variable if we have a zero input, but we change two variables if we have a one input. For state S3, we change only one variable for a zero input, and we also change only one variable for one input. And for S4, we change only one variable for a zero input, and also we change only one variable for one input. And finally, for state S5, Five, we change only one variable if we have a zero input but we change two variables if we have a one input. So this state assignment is not gray coded in the sense that we always only change one state variable but we are doing a very good job of changing as few state variables as possible. Only in two of the possible cases we change two variables instead. Now let us write this as our Carnot maps. So again, we have three Carnot maps. They are two by two because we have four variables in total, Q1, Q2, Q3, and X. And we have one Carnot map each for the next state function for Q1 plus, Q2 plus, and Q3 plus. So let's fill this out. So if we are in state zero, 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 and we get a zero as an input, we go to state one, zero, zero. If we instead get a 1 as an input, we go to 0, 0, 1. Next, let's go to state S1, which is 1, 0, 1. If we have a 0 as an input here, we will go to the state 0, 0, 1. And if we have a 1 as an input, we go to the state 1, 1 and 1. Then for the state S2 we call 0, 1, 1. If we have a 0 as an input we go to the state 1, 1 and 1. And if we have a 1 as an input we go to 0, 0, 0. And S3 we call 1, 0, 0. With a 0 as an input we go to 0, 0, 0. And with a 1 as an input we go to 1, 0, 1. And S4 we call 0, 0, 1. With a 0 as an input we go to 1, 0, 1. So we have 1, 0, 1. And with a 1 as an input we go to 0, 1, 1. And for state S5 we call it 1, 1, 1. With a 0 as an input we go to 0, 1, 1. And with a 1 as an input we go to 1, 0, 0. And the rest of the entries in our Carnot maps will be don't care terms because these will be represented by states and input that cannot occur. Now let us try to find the prime implicants for our ones. So starting with the first one that we have for Q1+, we can find this cyclic prime implicant that covers all these three ones together with one of the don't care terms. We will not be able to, for the other two ones, be able to find a larger prime implicant. 
So if we go to the next prime implicant that we need to find uh, a box for, that is this one. So this will be the two prime implicants that we need in order to cover this function. For Q2+, plus, for the one that we have up here, we will have this prime implicant, which also covers another one. And for the last two ones that we have, we will be able to find this prime implicant here that also uses two of our don't care terms. And then for our last function Q3+, plus, we will find first this prime implicant covering four ones. And then we find also this prime implicant here that covers these four ones. This is as small as we can make Q3+, plus, but you should note that if you want to find all the prime implicants, this is also a prime implicant. The prime implicant here will also be a prime implicant. And this one is also a prime implicant. And from this it is clear that none of the prime implicants that we have for the Q3 plus functions are essential. But using the ones that are in blue color, it means that we use as few prime implicants as possible and still cover our function. So using this we can write our minimal functions as Q1 plus equals Q1 prime x prime or Q1 x Q2 plus equals Q2 prime Q3 x or Q2 x prime and finally Q3 plus is given by the two prime implicants in blue which is the first one is Q2 prime x or Q3 x prime. So counting the number of implicants, we see that we have six implicants in total. And this can be compared to the eight implicants that we had for the NBCD coding. So clearly the state assignment will here affect the number of implicants that we have in our realization. And in this case, the gray coding gave a better realization and a smaller realization than the NBCD coding.